Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Uh, getting back to our read aloud today. Uh, real quick, I want to summarize what happened the last time we read. It was a chapter where Nick had to go home and study where words came from. And we kind of learned that Nick is very determined. When he wants to do something, he really does it. In fact, he looked at the children's set of encyclopedias they had in his house. And they looked at the adult set. He uh, read over and over again even though things kind of seemed confusing to him. So when he is determined to accomplish a goal, he really doesn't give up. Today we're on chapter five. It is called The Report. <clears throat> and I'm interested to see what's going to happen when Nick goes back into Miss Granger's classroom and has to give that report. Because we know that Nick doesn't really like to do things the normal way. So my guess is, my prediction is, that he's probably going to go in there and do something a little bit silly, a little bit off, that may cause some kids to laugh, may get them in some trouble, but it's probably not going to be what your average fifth grade student would do. So let's see what Nick does. By lunchtime the next day, Nick had had a bad feeling in the pit of his stomach. Seventh period was coming. He was going to have to stand up in front of Miss Granger's entire class. The eyes of everyone in the class would be glued to his face. And Mrs. Granger's eyes would be cranked up to maximum punch power. This is one of the examples of why I love Andrew Clement so much. He has a way of writing that's really funny, but using figurative language. Language that's not supposed to be taken literally. In fact, that's kind of why I wore this shirt today. Misuse of literally makes me figuratively insane. We have two great examples here in this paragraph. The first one is, the eyes of his class would be glued to his face. Now, we know as readers, the people in his class, the other students, their eyes aren't literally going to be glued to his face. That'd be disgusting. That's gross. What the author means is they're going to be watching him very closely. The second time Andrew Clements does this is when he says Mrs. Granger's eyes would be cranked up to maximum punch power. That's a little harder to understand, but I think I understand it. I think what uh, he's saying is that her eyes are going to be so on him that she's going to be looking for a chance to get upset. I'm sure you've seen that in teachers and parents before where you can just see it in their eyes like, uh-oh, we're in trouble. Maximum punch power. It doesn't mean literally she can punch Nick with her eyes. That would be crazy and weird. It means that she can give him that look where he knows he just did something horrible. All right, let's continue. Nick looked over his notes again and again. The first English dictionary, the growth of the English language, William Shakespeare, words from French and German, New words, old words, new inventions, Anglo-Saxon words, Latin and Greek roots, American English. It all had become a giant jumble in his mind. And his grand plan from the night before, in the harsh fluorescent lights of the school day, his plan seemed impossible. What is it with the clocks in school? When you're planning to go to the carnival after school, the clocks in every class practically run backward. And the school day seems to last for about three weeks. But if you have to go to the barber or go shopping for clothes after school, zip, the whole day is over before you can blink. And today, after lunch, periods five and six went by in two clicks. As the seventh period bell rang, Mrs. Granger walked into the classroom, took four steps to her desk, at the side of the room and flipped open her attendance book. She glanced out of the class and made two little check marks. Then looking up at Nick, she said, I think we have a little report to begin our class today. Nicholas? 15 seconds into seventh period, and Nick was on stage. This lady plays for keeps, thought Nick. He gulped grabbed his crumpled up note cards in his book bag, and walked to the front of the room. He stood next to the giant dictionary on its little table, and Mrs. Granger walked to the back of the classroom and sat primly 
on a tall stool next to the bookcases. She was wearing her blue uniform. Taking a deep breath, Nick began. Well, the first thing I learned is that the first English dictionary... Mrs. Granger interrupted. Excuse me, Nicholas, but does your report have a title? Nick looked blankly at her. A title? No, no, I didn't make up a title. Class, please remember to include a title whenever you prepare an oral or written report. Now, please, go on, Nicholas. And she smiled and nodded at him. Nick began again. Looking right at Miss Granger, he said, The dictionary. A couple of kids thought that was funny, but Nick played it straight and just kept on talking. A lot of people think that the first English dictionary was put together in the 1700s by a man named Samuel Johnson. He lived in London, England. He was real smart and he wrote a lot of books. And he wanted all the other smart people to have a good dictionary to use, so he made one. But there were other dictionaries before his. The thing that was different about Johnson's dictionary was its size. First of all, he had over 43,000 words in it. The class made a bunch of noise at that big number. Ooh, and wow, and stuff like that. And Nick kind of lost his concentration. He glanced up at Miss Granger, expecting to see those eyes drilling a hole into him. Again, she can't really drill holes with her eyes. We know what she means by that, uh, what Andrew Clements means. But they weren't. They were almost friendly, in like a teachery friendly kind of way. She shushed the class and said, Go on, Nicholas. That's a good beginning. Nick almost smiled, but he saw all the kids staring at him. So he gripped his note cards even tighter and jumped back in. The other thing that Johnson did that was special was he chose the words he thought were most important and then gave lots of examples showing how those words could be used by people. For example, he showed how the word take could be used in 113 different ways. Nick's report went on smoothly for 12 minutes. Nick was surprised at how easy it was to just stand there and talk about this stuff. At the end of the first five minutes, Mrs. Granger had to stop Nick again to say, Class, it is not good manners to yawn out loud or to put your heads down on your desk when someone is giving an oral report. No one in the class cared one bit about the report, except Mrs. Granger. Every time Nick glanced up, she was smiling. Now I'm confused here, because so far Nick seems to be doing a great job with his report, and Mrs. Granger seems happy. But he said he had this big plan, and knowing Nick, usually his plan would involve something crazy going on, right? I don't know. Let's keep reading and find out. And her eyes are not the least bit icy or sharp. She was eating the stuff up, listening and nodding, and every once in a while she would say, Yeah, oh, that's a very good point. Or, Yes, that's exactly right. But the next time Nick looked up, he saw Mrs. Granger sneaking a look at her watch. Hmm. 18 minutes gone. Maybe his idea was going to work after all. It was time for phase two. Okay, so I was wanting to do a chapter a day, but this is a pretty long chapter, and we went through the first phase of his plan. And we really didn't get a clue on what that plan was, or at least what the first phase was, till that last paragraph. In that last paragraph, the author informed us that Miss Granger had to check her watch, and 18 minutes had already passed. Kind of sounds to me like Nick's plan might to be to run out the clock, to just sit up there, give the report for as long as possible, so that way when the report's done, there's no time left for class. That's kind of what I'm taking away from that last paragraph. And the very last thing we hear in that paragraph is it's time for phase two. So he's got something else up his sleeve as well. We're going to wait till tomorrow to figure out what happens in phase two of Nick's plan. Thank you, guys.